In this root locus example, we have now a function with three more poles than zeros. n, the number of poles, is 3, and m, the number of zeros, is 0. So n minus m is 3. We have an excess of three poles, so all poles will have to go to infinity following asymptotes. The angle of those asymptotes can, is given by this formula again. And now Q goes from 1 to 3. So you have Q equals to 1, Q equals to 2, and Q equals to 3. The angle of these asymptotes can now be calculated by simply replacing Q. So theta 1 is obtained when Q equals to 1. And this is 180 plus 0 divided by 3. This is 60 degrees. When theta for theta 2, we set Q equals to 2. And now we have 180 plus 360 divided by 3. This is 180 degrees. And for theta 3, set Q equals to 3. And this will give... 180 plus 360 times 2 divided by 3, this is 300 degrees, or negative 60 degrees. We can now place all the poles and zeros on the S-plane. We have a pole at negative 0 0.5. We have a pole at negative 1. And we have a pole at negative 2. Now let's determine the locations on the real axis that have a root locus. We know that it's always to the left of an odd number of poles and zeros, so we start counting from positive infinity. Up to 0 0.5 we have a count of 0. Between 0 0.5 and 1 the count is 1. Between 1 and 2 the count is 2. And past negative 2 the count is now 3. So the odd segments are between 0 0.5 and 1, and between negative 2 and negative infinity. So that's where the root locus is. We have three poles. I have no zeros to go to. So all these three poles we have to go to infinity somehow. And these are the angle of the asymptotes that will take them to infinity. Let's calculate now the centroid of these asymptotes. The centroid of these asymptotes that are called alpha is the sum of poles minus the sum of zeros divided by n minus m. And this is, for the poles, we have negative 2, negative 1, negative 0 0.5, plus minus, uh, minus 0, and the number of zeros, divided by 3. And this is negative 1.16. The centroid of the asymptotes is at negative 1.16. Now we can trace these asymptotes. We know that this is the centroid. One of the asymptotes has an angle of 60 degrees with respect to the real axis. We can now create a 60 degrees asymptote going up. The other one has an angle of negative 60 degrees, so it goes down. Negative 60 degrees. And the third one has an angle of 180 degrees. So it goes to negative infinity with an angle of 180 degrees, like that. Now where is the root locus? The root locus is between these two, as we determined before, and is to the left of negative 2. So here it's easy, negative 2 it has a root locus to its left, and you have the asymptote going to negative infinity. So this pole, as k goes from 0 to infinity, goes to negative infinity. Now what happens to these two? These two have to come together at one point and break away and go to the asymptotes. So one of these poles now goes up and the other one goes down. And then they become tangent to those asymptotes. So these poles will come together to this point, one goes up, one goes down. Now notice something very important here is this breakaway point is not the centroid of the asymptotes. In fact, the centroid of the asymptotes in this example is outside of the root locus. It's right here. There is no root locus here. The point where these two poles come together and break away to the imaginary axis 
is called the breakaway point. It's different from the centroid of the asymptotes, and this point will be calculated in the upcoming lecture. But for now, let's simply worry about the rough sketch of this root locus. So what is happening here? As k goes from 0 to infinity, this pole goes to negative infinity. These two poles will come together, break away, and then go to plus minus infinity following the asymptotes. Now notice that they are going towards the unstable region of the S-plane. At one point, they will cross the imaginary axis at this point right here and right here, and will now become unstable. So this root locus tells us that as we increase the gain, the system that was overdamped becomes underdamped with more and more and more oscillations until it becomes unstable. How do we determine this, the gains at these two points? Or we can use the route Hurwitz stability criterion to see what the maximum gain is. And that maximum gain that leads to instability will bring the poles to these two points. What is the gain that will make the system critically damped here? This is also something you're going to cover in the upcoming lecture.